I'm, I'm going to suggest that we actually um, start with something that's actually, oh, <laughs> and then Jennifer Car added a new section in this new subchapter, um, and it's Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage legis legislative intent. And it says that in establishing Dr. Dinosaur-like coverage for children and pregnant individuals who are not eligible for the Dr. Dinosaur program because of their immigration status, it is the intent of the General Assembly that the hospital, medical, dental, and prescription drug benefits and eligibility criteria for the coverage that's set forth in that next section should align to the greatest extent practicable with the benefits and eligibility criteria of the Dr. Dinosaur program. So this is stating intent that you're looking to provide with Dr. Dinosaur and this new program. So that then when we go into this new setting, the language up with the Vermont Medicaid state plan. Great. The extent that applicable funds are appropriated in the fiscal year 2022 budget um, as when it's in the language. The budget as proposed by the Senate. Right. Okay. So um, questions, let's... Are there questions? Wow. Oh, Representative Peterson. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, hate to beat a dead horse because I talked about it before. The confidentiality statement, when it says you can do everything except give these data to the United States government. Is it, the, is it the law to give it to the government? How, how, what's the relationship, just so I'm clear? The reason that the language, uh, that I put the language in like that is because in the, in this, this language is, is kind of piggybacking on the existing language in um, section 1902 of chapter 19 of title 33. And that language says, um, specifically includes the federal government as a as a recipient of the information because it's a federal state partnership program, Medicaid. So this is saying those same confidentiality provisions apply except for that part about making information available dollars program. Right. So is it is it useful to remind us that this is being paid for with strictly Vermont funds? not with any federal match or federal right. funds. Right, this is outside of the Medicaid program. And that was why Diva had those concerns about- ...status that that would be an issue. I guess that's the best way I can work. Consideration, and it was my understanding that, that it was important to some folks to have language in here to provide that um, comfort and reassurance to applicam. Um, and it's using state only dollars. There isn't a clear need for that need information to be provided to the federal government. Thing be turned over. I mean, they would just sign up and, and everyone to go their merry way, do you think? Well, if I piggybacked on this same language about section 1902A applying, yeah. um, that language says, and I can put, the, maybe it would be helpful to put the language up. I can show you. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's immigration language in law that requires the state to, to give that information to the federal government. I guess that's the best way to describe it. Well, here it is here, I guess. Well, so this is what I was, this is just, this yeah. is the 1902A language. And so it says all applications submitted and records created under the authority of this chapter concerning any applicant for or recipient of Medicaid are confidential and shall be made only available only to persons authorized by the agency, the state, or the United States for purposes directly related to plan administration. Well, there's no plan, admin, there's no federal plan administration of this state only benefit. Um, so, so, I mean, we don't, we don't necessarily put specific language about not providing information to the federal government in all state programs that don't have a federal component, but I think because of the issues around this one about immigration status, there was particular concern about the confidentiality of that information. Okay, all right, thank you. Can, can I just ask again, because I think one of the questions that was raised as well was, we had provided, I believe, some similar type or some 
um, or something along the same lines uh, to give some comfort around the stimulus dollars that were extended, as well as to the um, DMV. Um, the DMV was the result of a settlement. I checked in with my colleague who does transportation and the, um, the withholding of specific exclusion of information from um, being shared with the federal government is not in statute around the, okay. the non-resident driver's licenses. It's, it was the result of a, of a of litigation and a settlement um, between migrant justice and the DMV. Air office, um, how, how are they you know, registered? How are they taken in? How will they get reimbursed? Is that part of where you're going? I mean, Woody, because it's like, how, how would how would someone access this program? I, I don't know. I just, oh, I don't that's... know what the questions are and I don't know how, how is an individual supposed to respond to those, those questions? You know, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing to be honest with you. I would think for that person to be, to be right there at the front desk, everybody's looking and listening, you know? Um, and in fact, <laughs> It might even restrict the individual from going to see their their doctor, you know. So I'm just throwing that out there. I realize there's probably no good answer to it, but it just it just seems kind of funny to me. Um, Can I weigh in on that a little bit? Well, if you'd like, yes. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I mean, anytime anybody works walks into a healthcare facility area any more than it currently already is. At least now there's an option. For this select for, for this for a subset. I mean, right now they're already dealing with that issue of they're going to ask me what I have for insurance and I don't have anything. So, so here's another question. Does Diva provide a card for these individuals um, that are undocumented, or will they in the future, when we get the word out to the, you know, the various farms and other establishments? I believe Diva indicated that they would get a Green Mountain Care card just like any other person under Vermont Medicaid. Everybody gets the same card. They may be under different programs, but they all get a little card with the mountain on it and the name and your ID number. But it would okay. clearly not be a Medicaid card. Right, it's the term, it's the umbrella term for the programs, uh, the health programs administered by the Department of Vermont Health Access. So I, I think I, my understanding is the same as Representative Black said they would get that same card. Um, the patient experience uh, of, which, of their card would not be different. It's the back end of which funds are used to pay claims that would be different. So, so how, does, how does an undocumented worker get, a, get one of these uh, Green Mountain um, um, cards. Do, do we have? We, we have so there's, there's an outreach pr provision in the okay. bill. Okay. There's an outreach. I, I know provision. that. I know that. Yeah. So, that, so is that is that part of this? Okay. Very yes. Good. That yes. Then that, that was uh, the language in there requires the outreach grants for outreach to organizations to provide outreach and inf information. Um, both for the opportunity to get coverage during this kind of transition year, of FY 2022, but also after, so that there would be information about potentially how to sign up or so, what the process is or where to go. So as soon as they arrive at the primary care physician, they'll already have this green card to provide. Potentially, or if they don't, I think, you know, Representative Black is saying, and I think we've heard this from others too, that, that um, that's the kind of thing that the providers would also be made aware of so that they could um, connect a patient with that, with, with the enroll application and enrollment, which they do now for Medicaid as well, um, if they were not covered. Okay. Uh, Representative Peterson? You're muted. Yeah, if okay. Leslie wants to go, I think she was before me or no? Okay. Well, I was just going to say, let me just say that I think you covered the issue. I think there are two ways into the program. The first is this outreach program through the communities, then people will get their cards and then we'll feel safe going to get care. And then the second way was they will arrive for care. And as 
Representative Black says then people within the medical offices will recognize that they're eligible for this program and be sure they get it. So it's gonna come from both places. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I think that summarizes it, yeah. Okay, uh, re thank you. Uh, Representative Peterson? Yeah, yes, I, and, and again, I wanna, and I, I don't know who can help me here, but wanna understand if I can the population we're 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 giving this to, um, and I and I, I excuse my ignorance here, but when migrant workers say come here to work, are they are there are there some who have a card? I've heard of green cards. I don't even know what it is, but do they have a a card or something that? tell someone that they are legal to be in the country or state? Is that is that what these folks are supposed to show anybody? Or is it, does no one check at all and they just come in and, and they, they do the work they're supposed to do? Do we know that? Or, or do we even care about it uh, in terms of this? Can I, can, I, can I suggest we step back from that question? Because I think the question is, for whom is this program available? Right. And this program is available to those who are here because of their immigration status are not eligible for Medicaid. Am I correct? That's right. And that may be people who are here both. It's, it's, um, different, it's, different, it's different statuses. They're, right. Not just no, right, describing. And that's actually why Diva suggested not using the language of undocumented immigrants because there are some people who are here with you know what you would call documents um who are here under a particular visa program for uh, okay. agricultural workers but medicaid still does not consider that group eligible for medicaid so there are people okay. in different different statuses but what they have in common is that they are ineligible for medicaid because of their immigration status whatever that is Okay, they, so they, they could be a mix of a lot of different levels of, of whatever. Okay. And so my other question would be, and, and I, just you know, posing it, if the federal government was looking for someone who was wanted, say, and, and they went to us and asked, you know, have you seen so-and-so? he's wanted in other states. Would our information on, uh, on, on what we're doing here be provided to the, to the feds in a case like that or no? Is I don't think solely on that, I, right. I don't think solely on the basis of we're looking for somebody, do you know this person? I think, you know, there, there is, I suppose, potential if there was a subpoena for information uh, that they could be required to turn it over, although I'm not familiar enough with the circumstances under which that would occur to know whether our confidentiality provision would be strong enough to prevent that or not. Okay, thank you. Other questions? So let me, let me try out where I think we are and where we need to be before we take any formal action. Uh, it seems to me that, so what, what we're doing is reviewing in anticipation of action by the Senate, uh, which has not happened yet. But what we have done at this point is to brief ourselves on what we anticipate are the most likely changes to the bill that we sent to the Senate. So what we will need to do, so I don't anticipate, I'm not, I'm not asking for anyone to, for us to take any action here today, but what we will do is for this bill and for several others that are in a similar situation, we will return to putting these back on our action calendar, if you will, for our committee uh, at some point we are right now. And I think that sets us in good stead for thinking about it more efficiently when it comes back officially from the Senate. And that's the goal of this afternoon, to do that with a number of these bills.